So, how's it been? Um, welcome back to the mini series, watching reviews. This is part three point one. So today we're gonna look at something I've never seen before in one six four scale. It's the two thousand and two thousand Chevy Corvette C five R, the one in the GTS Quest. 424 hours at the mall in the hands of Ron Fellows, Johnny O'Connell, both were factory drivers at the time, and Ober Gavin. In fact, Gavin was just starting up his career as a factory driver for Fred and Noah slash Corvette at this time in 2002. Uh, before we start the review, you want to know if, in fact, this is chassis. T5R-003 Now, 003 won the 2001 24 hours edition, 2001 edition of the 24 hours and it debuted in the American Novel series back in 2000 as a secondary car and now it was a main car for 2001 and 2002 It won the, in fact, this is the very chassis that won the Rogues 24 in 2001. Overall, because of the per, because of the wet weather. In Le Mans, this, the car sat on the front row, I believe, and that car basically won the, and this very chassis won the 2001 edition. I can't remember when they, where they started in the 2002 edition, but they won't end up in the race again, two years in a row. Also, the third driver... <laughs> sorry. Uh, the third driver that won... that was in the 2001 edition was not Gavin. He was a... a, a journeyman at the time. That third driver in the, the 2001 edition was driven by Scott Pruitt. I looked at the racing sports cars uh, a couple weeks ago and found that this, this car was in fact driven by, by two same drivers, Okono and Fellows. The third drivers being Pruitt and Gavin, obviously. But I genuinely didn't think this was the the chassis that won the uh, 2001 Rolex overall so kind of a fun fact there also the third one that in 2001 Corvette Racing ran a Grand Sports Drive to, I believe this was to represent the 40th anniversary of that trim but in 2002 they went back to this iconic banana yellow oh, without the stripe and you want to know what's familiar with uh, Corvette fans at the time? But a black rear bumper. Now, I can't remember why they went with the black bumper. I believe this is a tribute. I called me my wrong, but I think this is the tribute. To Theo Earnhardt at the time, uh, I can't be sure because I know this off on top of my head from uh, my NASCAR knowledge. So the black bumper might be a tribute to uh, Theo Senior. I can't be sure though, but it's a pretty amazing diecast. I'm pretty happy to have it in my collection. I got this back in June, I believe, when the My Brothers had a had a. It's not an option, but what it kind of is, you'll basically, if you said mine first, uh, you'll get the car. And this is what I got. The Corvette and the uh, Nissan R31, which we'll take a look at later. Uh, I didn't expect this much detail on a 164 scale C5R. Oh. Before we get to the review, here is the 
at the base and the case of here. Also, the bottom of the case is actually wrong. This is actually for the Ferrari F310B, in fact. They have, they, you have to assemble, essentially. The RK1 is basically just stock, has nothing, so there's that, and the base. As per usual, held by one screw and a tab. Pretty nice. And now, we're going to go with the start of the show, of course, is the diecast. Now, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, but some of the sponsors that were, were invoked in 2001 into versions are different replaced. I have not looked at pictures since the last couple of weeks. Uh, I just didn't bother looking at pictures. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, if, if the sponsors are actually placed differently. In both 2001 and 2 versions of Le Mans. Uh, <laughs> I just know the stance of the car on top of my head. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to apologize for that. But yeah, let's get to the review for real this time. So you get to the front of the C5 bar. Of course, we got the massive... Is it one of focus? A massive Corvette logo. On top of it is mobile one, just before the, just below the vents. They kind of molded the vents, but not really. And the louvet. You can feel the texture, kind of the the louvet. As you zoom into the front of the car, there's a sponsorship in this. What you might recognize. At the time, Motorola was the most recognizable mobile company at this time. Let's see Motorola on the front where the endurance lights will be. So you want to focus for whatever right reason. It doesn't want to do it doesn't want to get held up. We got the American flag as well, NYPD and the US Navy. At the time US Navy was still Still had involvement in motorsport at this time as well. Uh, NYPD obviously a tribute to those who lost their lives in 911 the year before. Good year. They were using good year at this time as well. OZ. They're still using OZ, in fact. AC Delco. AC Delco is still, still striving in uh, Asia, surprisingly. On the, once we get to the windscreen, we got the AER logo, it's a, on focus. Yep, there you go. The AER logo. It's right there. And the red Corvette banner. This is always been for the main Corvette. So I just want to focus for whatever reason. And put it back. There we go. I have to pull it, pull it back. First back. Just so you can get it focused. Um, here are the three drivers. Of course. Gavin Fellows and O'Connell. That were in the 2002 edition of the race. And we did this. Yeah, this car retired after uh, the Lima race. In the Lima race. Uh, the American Noble Series. I can't be sure because. I can only remember the Rolex and the two Le Mans. Chassis 3 token so <laughs> correct correct me if I'm wrong with the comments um, we got the Chevy logo the Chevy bow tie on the rear window and of course this is a tribute to 911 United we stand on the rear wing the European Union logo now uh, European flag rather and the US flag on the rear wing in place we got oops we got the AUW Delphi and GM. Can't remember what 
UAW stood for, but tell me in the comments about uh, UAW. I just cannot recall the time that I knew of a UAW. I just knew this from a NASCAR, so there's some NASCAR connection with the sponsors. AR, a mobile one on the rear bumper and the, the rear fender, G Mac. So you get both sides of the doors. We got the AC Delco logo in black. I'm not sure why that's true. There's a little sticker in there. I can't tell what that sticker is. I might have to look at the uh, real car after the uh, after I finish this review. We got the 63. Usually this is the number three when they're racing at the American Le Mans series. The American flag. Oops. Uh, oh, now it doesn't want to focus. There we go. We got the Hemma. This is the first I can zoom. We got Catch, the Hemma, and GM performance parts. Which is uh, no longer a thing. And in the back of the uh, car, we got. And you got, we got Mojo, the Mojiro logo, logo yet again. <laughs> this time in white, the contrast of the black, the CorbettRacing.com website, the Quest decal, the number, and of course we got the Brandon Miller logo. That's the first time I've ever seen the Brandon Miller logo on any Corvette. Also, you got the large diffuser. Very pronounced. Speaking of detail, there's not much to talk about in base. This has got the manufacturer Chosho, made in China, 2002, which is technically a 2000 car because this car debuted in 2000 in the American Lamont series. I actually like this casting. Probably being and going back home, excited to see this car in and see this car in person. So I ended up looking at this car, the recent post, recent sports cars on sportscar.com, like I said before in the intro. Take a better look at what this car had to offer in terms of uh, stats. I'm surprised this. Is the car that won the 2001 Pro 24 overall and who consented a uh, Le Mans victories? It's kind of and it's neat to have a Corvette that made history. We had Rolex, have made a uh, history at the Rolex in 2001. Uh, so that's for part three point one. We'll see you later then for uh, the. Tar part 3.2, this is the Corvette C5R by the way.